Hello, my name is Dr. Judith Ford. I'm a retired radiation oncologist and palliative care doctor. Um, doing something I find very hard, which is trying to hold a phone and video myself and be fairly succinct because last time I tried this, it was far too big a file to send anywhere. So um, I will hold my hand up to begin with and say that my work in palliative care, in fact, the last 10 years of my work as a doctor was in uh, Los Angeles in a university hospital there. But I believe that people are people everywhere and end of life is an individual thing for everybody. It is not a one size fits all. And I think it was found it was very important to really make sure that the care was tailored to the aims and wishes of the person who was near the end of their life. And indeed the family were important too. So I'm going to give some examples of why uh, my personal philosophy was to make the last six months the best six months. And the sort of things that people did and chose to do. That all started when I had a patient who was a stuntman and had got lung cancer despite being a non-smoker at the age of 42. And he had tumours in his spinal cord and so his muscles were weak and he was having difficulty walking. But you'd go and visit him on the ward and he'd have a can of Ensure in each arm and would be doing arm lifts to keep his muscles up. And he was just great. His stunt coordinator said at his memorial service that the most important thing was not his great career, he was a very successful stuntman, but that it was the last six months because he had been so positive and supportive of everyone else around him. And I just thought that was amazing. And there came the philosophy. And so I'm going to tell you other stories of things that people achieved. That was a, a, an achievement of being supportive of others, of really making the world, his life worthwhile. But others did things like weddings. The first wedding was when I was working in New Zealand and there was a uh, Maori gentleman who wanted to marry his Pākehā partner, Pākehā being the white New Zealander. That's the Māori word for it. It means long white pig, but white New Zealanders call themselves Pākehā. Um, and uh, they'd been together for quite a long while. Uh, this gentleman had uh, a couple of grown-up children by his previous marriage to a Māori woman. Um, but they were all supportive and they'd done all the paperwork ready for the wedding, but he just got sick very quickly. And so we got the hospital chaplain and the lady borrowed a white skirt from one of the nurses. Uh, not part of the uniform, I just think it was a skirt she had. And I stole some flowers off the secretary's desk. And in the side ward, we had this small wedding ceremony with just the two children from the previous marriage, myself and the chaplain. And it was very moving. Uh, it was very short. And the wife stayed overnight, new wife stayed overnight in the side room with him. And he died the next day. But that was just an amazing thing. And it says that you can keep living your life and achieving things till the very, very last moment. The other wedding I want to tell you about affected a family in a different way in that the father was dying and the um, son was getting married, but because they were Japanese, they wouldn't be able to hold the ceremony within quite a long period of time. I don't remember exactly what, after the father had died. And they were quite disturbed about that. And um, I went to the ward one day and the nurses said, oh, don't go in that room. And I said, why not? And they said, they're having the wedding. They brought the wedding forward and had it by the father's bedside in his room so that he could be there. And these are beautiful things. Sometimes things people want are much more practical. Um, for example, I had a couple of patients 
with brain tumours who refused the chemotherapy that you'd normally give as well, which would help some people and not others, and you wouldn't know whether it would help you or not. One, because he wanted to hand his business over to his daughter, and he wanted the time to do that. That was more important than, you know, taking that chance. And the other, because he was born, had been born in Germany and lived in Australia, and he wanted to travel and visit his friends. So it was a matter of making choices that were to do with what people wanted for their lives. And the doctor was not to go in and just go, well, we'll treat this, or we'll try this, or we'll try the other, and this may help, but to go, what do you want to do with your life? What's important? And sometimes it can be quite simple things. Another patient wanted to see the sunset over the ocean before she died. Now, would be difficult in Norfolk because the sun doesn't set over the ocean, but this was quite doable in Los Angeles. And on her way home from hospital, the family booked a, a big room or a suite of rooms, I think, in a hotel overlooking the ocean. And they had a sort of family party and get together. And she saw the sunset over the ocean that night and they stayed over and went home the next day. And that is about creating memories and creating good memories. Uh, are other things sometimes people need to do um, that are more just holiday fun stuff. So I had one girl who desperately wanted to swim with the dolphins in Hawaii. Again, easier from the east coast, of, the west coast of America than from here. Um, but indeed, by getting her pain controlled and twisting the doctor's arm to miss a week's worth of chemo, because it probably wasn't helping in that case, um, she got to do that. And it was important. So these are all pretty big examples, or, you know, event type things. But there are always people you want to see or things you might have thought about doing but haven't. And instead of going, oh, dear, I'm ill. This is the end of my life. It's going, I have this life left. What is there that I want to do that I can do with it? And actually making the most of it and working with your doctors to enable you to make the most of it. And even if it's only simple things like deadheading the roses in the garden instead of going into work on Fridays, and yes, that's another true story, it's important that you look at the whole rounded quality of life, often about people's, but it may be long-held ambitions that you want to fulfil. That's really what I have to say about this. Make the last six months the best six months and look at that as the aim. You need good pain control, support with mobility, social support, all sorts of things. But use that time and use it well. Thank you.